everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Idiot Quilter, episode 160 for March the 29th, 2022. Hope you had a good week and hope you made something nice for yourself or for someone else. So let's talk about nice things that I've been making. And the first thing I'm going to show you is right here. This is my Easter table runner. This was an in the hoop project. It was designed or it came from uh, Juju Designs. I have never ordered anything from this particular company before, but I think I will order things in the future because, well, the instructions for putting this together were absolutely clear. They were really well written. Um, I've done in the hoop applique before many times, actually. I quite like doing in the hoop applique, and that's what this is. Um, so, yeah, what those instructions were some of the best I've ever found. So taking a closer look at this, um, you can see that it has some religious symbolism in it. There was actually a little bit more than what you see here because there were some uh, words on here as well uh, that are very Christian in terms. I am not a Christian, um, have nothing against it. I was raised in what would have been referred to as a Christian um, home, but uh, I broke away from the church a long time ago and that's a story a very detailed story for another time if ever at all but nevertheless um i think this will look nice on my table it's got the lilies and the peace doves and a cross on it and i used my butterfly fabric in this one it's been sitting on my shelf for a while waiting for an appropriate project and i thought you know with easter the whole idea of rebirth in the season springtime all that kind of stuff and you know butterflies are colorful and i just thought they worked really well in the background of this um i'm really happy with the way this turned out and it looks great on my dining room table and it will be on my dining room table in a couple of weeks time on Easter Sunday when my sister's family all come here for dinner, which will be the first time we've had anybody here for dinner since, you know, pre-COVID. So it'll be fun and it's really going to add uh, a brightness, I think, to my table settings as well. Um, so that's one project that I was working on. And another one I just started. Now, I'm going to talk more about this, but if you're on Stephen and Walter yesterday, uh, you know, of course, that this is the week. Uh, come Thursday, we leave for the retreat, the in-person retreat, uh, sponsored by Ultimate Sewing Quilt Store here in my area. We're looking really forward to it, and I've been putting together some kits of projects that I can work on over the time when we're there. Uh, this was not one of the kits, though, but... The other day, I was looking for another project that I could get started. I didn't want to start the kit projects um, until I got to the retreat, but I needed something else to work on in the meantime. And I have a lot of pre-cuts, uh, jelly rolls, layer cakes, charm packs, a lot. I see them, they're pretty, I buy them, I don't do anything with them. In fact, I was uh, listening to something the other day, and I forget where it was I heard it, but someone said they're so pretty um you know you buy those things why not buy yourself a shadow box uh from a craft store and put all your fat quarter bundles in those and put them on display and then swap them out every now and then uh when you go to use them uh so you know you can look at them and you know although i think he was being somewhat facetious with that kind of comment it actually got thinking about it you know it's not such a bad idea for sewing room decor you know, take a fat bundle or a charm pack that's really pretty and lay it out on display and something that you can, you know, when you go to use it, you'll substitute another one that you've bought in there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do it, but it's an interesting concept if you think about it, really. But anyways, I digress. Uh, so I was looking through my stash and I found four charm packs that were all the same. And it was these ones that I've made these blocks with. And they're five inch charms. So it was really easy to do something that like with half square triangles. And so I did a sawtooth star. And originally my idea was, okay, well, I'd make a whole bunch of these sawtooth star blocks um, and put them together in a quickie quilt. Maybe add a little sashing. I went to electric quilt and sort of designed something out with that. Um, but then I got thinking, well, maybe just all sawtooth stars is kind of boring. Let's break it up a little bit with an alternate uh, block design, and that's why you see the windmill design, using the same fabrics, but just a slightly different design. And I think it's gonna look quite 
nice. I like the colors in it, but of course I lean towards blues and purples and that kind of thing in the teals. So this all fits into my color scheme. And I don't know, I'm thinking now that I may even branch out and make uh, the borders a little bit different. I was just going to do a plain border, but I'm thinking now I might do a pieced border. I don't know. It's a project in evolution uh, at the moment. So who knows what it's going to turn into by the time I get it done. So now I'm thinking, well, maybe I will take this as one of my kit projects to the retreat uh, and leave one behind. Uh, mainly because I've gotten started on this one already. I'll see. I don't know yet. That's something I have to figure out later uh, in the week before I go. Um, but I will keep you posted as to how this is working. So this is basically an improv quilt because I'm making it up as I go along. Um, I am a little worried that when I trimmed the block, I didn't think about my points on some of these. And I may have trimmed them a little close. I'll have to see what it's going to look like when I put them together. Um, and I'm actually thinking, and this is just a thought, um, if it is cutting off some of the points on these, I might purposely make my seams larger than a quarter inch. Might go to half an inch to purposely cut off the points. And then I could call the whole quilt pointless. <laughs> I don't know. These are the things that go through my head. You know, a lot of things go through my head. So anyways, that's what I've been working on. And, uh, Something uh, else, uh, well, let me just switch over here. So you may be interested in how far we've gotten with our costumes for the retreat. You know that we have been talking about those over the last couple of weeks. They're for our alter egos, Matilda Mudslinger and Gladass Happy Bum. And uh, yeah, they're done. But you're not going to see them yet. We actually haven't put the final touches on the accessories. We have accessories for this. But Walter finished uh, the last of the costumes last night. And I think later today we'll probably try them on now and get all the accoutrements, 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 the accessories together for them. And then I will take pictures. And next week you will see the pictures. Um, and you'll see pictures too of us in action with those costumes on at the retreat and maybe a little video as well. That's what I'm planning. Anyways, we'll see how that works out. Um, so yeah, the costumes are done and I think the ladies at the retreat are just going to get a hoot, uh, have a hoot over this. I'm sure they will. Um, other thing I did was I bought some products that have my brand on them. My brand sounds so official, doesn't it? My brand, but here they are. Um, there's a company called Vista Print. I have dealt with them many times in the past. I've made business cards with them. Uh, they're really reasonable. Usually you can get 500 business cards for 10 bucks Canadian and it's free shipping as well. So I have done that and they'll take any logo. You design your own logo, you upload it and they have some editing software embedded in their website so you can, you know, fine tune it and away you go. Well, they don't just do business cards, they do merch. They do, well, you can see here, pens, mugs, tote bags, um, and they have all kinds of other things too. Um, the idea here is that you can stock up on various items, and if you have a little store associated with your um, YouTube channel or your Facebook page or something like that, you can sell merch. And that seems to be very popular these days. A lot of people have merch stores uh, connected with their social media. I am not selling these. I'll tell you that right off the bat for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think anybody would buy them. And two, I have to set up an actual storefront for that. And that involves, you know, being able to accept credit cards and things like that. And I'm not getting into that. Um, I'm just doing this right now for fun. So I ordered some coffee mugs. I got four of these. You see one of them here. And I'm actually using one right now as well. And so I ordered four of those. Uh, the more you order something, the cheaper each individual item becomes. Um, so these are kind of pricey for coffee mugs for what they are. Um, they're good quality uh, coffee mugs and they are dishwasher safe because they have already gone through the dishwasher a couple of times and no problem that way. Uh, but if I'd ordered one cup, 
it would have cost about $20 Canadian. So that's pricey for a coffee cup, right? Uh, I did order four, as I said, a set of four, and that brought the price down, but I still paid for four cups, $41. So yeah, it's a little bit pricey. Um, the tote bags were not bad. I think they were $9 or something. All of this stuff was 40% off, by the way, that I got, and that's one reason why I placed the order that I did. Um, I got two of these tote bags with my logo on them. And uh, one of those, along with one of the coffee mugs, went to Walter. And we intend to take these to the retreat with us as well. Um, and I've ordered 10 pens uh, as well. And uh, Walter has one of those too. Um, so, yeah, they're just for me. They're just fun. I just like them. Yeah. So, anyways... That's something that I've ordered as well. Okay, so that takes me to the demo of the week. Now, this is something a little bit different. You know how I love In The Hoop Applique. I just showed you an In The Hoop Applique project, the table runner for Easter. And I thought you might be interested in seeing how I go about putting that together. So I was able to figure out a way that I could hook up my phone as a camera to get in close and personal with my embroidery machine. So I'm going to demo for you how to do in the hoop applique using your embroidery machine. So today I'm going to show you how I do in the hoop applique. And you can see here, I am working on an Easter table runner, which is an in the hoop design, which means that my embroidery, embroidery machine does all the sewing pretty much for me. I just have to put the panels together. So I've started some of these and I have two lily patterns and I have two peace dove patterns as well and in the center of these two peace doves will be a cross and I'm going to show you how I do this I'm getting things set up on my machine over here and I have a camera that will be giving you a close-up on the embroidery machine but just before I do that I'm just going to take you around here and show you what I have in the hoop this is a fairly large hoop and the program told me what size I should use and I have put in, I have hooped two pieces of cutaway stabilizer as my uh, base for this. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to have the machine go ahead and trace out the placement line for the batting. They'll put the batting down, the machine will tack it down, then I'll trim the batting and then I'll put my background fabric on top of that and um, it will tack that down and then we'll go on with the actual applique part. So now what I'm going to do is put down the placement stitch for the cross itself. This will show me how much fabric I need and where I need to lay it down. So I have my machine set up with white thread and it's going to draw the outline right here or sew the outline not draw. Now that that's complete, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the white thread in because I'm using white fabric and I'm just going to lay my fabric piece, which I have cut fairly generously on here, making sure it covers that entire outline of the cross. And it's going to stitch down what they call a tack down line. And then I will take it off the machine and I will trim it.
Okay, so you can see now that I have already stitched down the white cross and I took it off the uh, hoop or took the hoop off. I did not take the fabric out of the hoop and I trimmed all the way around it and I came very close to the edges to the stitching without cutting the stitching. And for that I used my applique scissors or pellet pellet scissors as they call them. This, these work really well because you can get really up close to the stitching without cutting it. It does take a little practice, but after you've done it a couple of times, you catch on very quickly. You'll also notice there's this addition of three red hearts here on the cross. And again, it, same thing. The machine drew out the placement line. I placed my red fabric on top of these. It stitched them down, tacked them down is what it's called, and then I trim very carefully around each one. So these are all raw edges still to a certain extent. And so what the machine is going to do now is going to add some of the embroidery out and along the sides of the cross, and then it will eventually satin stitch around the cross and around the hearts um, to secure them. So that's what I'm going to get started with now. My machine is loaded with white thread because that's what I've been using with the doves and the, um, uh, the lilies in here so it'll show up. And of course the cross is going to be satin stitched in uh, white but the hearts will be satin stitched in red. So I'll let you see a little bit of that process right now. I'm just stopping the machine because you may have noticed that there's a little bit of a extra tail of thread. I'm just going to clip that off. Make sure you always stop the machine before you do that because you could have a very bad accident if you did not. So now the embroidery machine has finished doing all of the little embellishment lines on the outside of the cross and now it's going to do a satin stitch all the way around the outside of this to secure it and to clean up the raw edges. So I'll let you see a little bit of that as it gets started. starts by doing a zigzag stitch all the way around and then it'll come back and fill it all in with a satin stitch. So this is just finishing up the satin sat satin stitch around the outside of the cross and the next thing I will have to change my thread color to red because it's going to do the satin stitch around the two or the three hearts in the center of the cross and there it is it's finished and it's going to go to the next position and now I'm going to switch my thread out to the red thread so it will do the satin stitching around the hearts on the far side and then we'll go and do the center part as well. Okay, so all the embroidery is done and now it's time to take this off the embroidery machine and to trim it up and I'm going to show you how you do that. Okay, a couple of weeks ago I showed you this toy that I had purchased called George Trimmer, the Trimmer by George 2.0 by Hoop Sisters and this is why I bought it. 
I have to trim this up, but I have to get rid of this stabilizer and make cut it right up close to the stitching around the actual piece. And then I need to trim a half an inch away from the stitch line or the tack, tacking line on the fabric part. So the first thing you want to do is trim up the stabilizer. So to do that, on this ruler, we flip it over and you see this white line? There's a, a ridge here, a steel ridge. And that's exactly uh, allows you to place it underneath the edge of the fabric on top, press it right up against the seam that's there, the seam line, and then you can trim it very cleanly. So that edge is done. Same thing. Now, yes, you don't need this ruler to do this, but this makes life a lot easier, and I'm really glad that I invested in this ruler. It wasn't that expensive. It was about $30 Canadian. So we do this to all four sides. So I've trimmed up the back of this. Let's get this out of our way so you can see. It's perfectly trimmed all the way around here, the way it's supposed to be. And now I just need to take my ruler and I'm going to line this up with my half inch line on the edge of the stitching line, the tack down line. And it is a little difficult to see because I used purple on purple and they're both dark. So we cut that off. that end off and do the same with the two sides perfectly cut up now what will happen is when eventually I get the sashing pieces done then I will sew it together now you can't sew it together on the embroidery machine you use your regular sewing machine for this but you use you this line that is very difficult for you to see so very difficult for me to see in this color but you will line your pieces up uh, right sides together and, and sew a quarter inch seam allowance down the edge and you'll have everything put together. So that's what I want to show you today is how I do in the hoop machine applique. And basically this system that I've shown you is essentially how it works for pretty much every kind of uh, in the hoop applique project. So if you like that kind of uh, video segment, let me know and maybe I can do more of that kind of thing um, with different projects or whatever uh, in the future. So that brings us to, to the subscribers, Rented Lips, Subscribers Quilt of the Week. And this is by uh, a relatively new subscriber to my channel. And her name is Ann M. M is the initial of her last name because she asked me not to say her last name. So her wish is my command. And she sent me uh, some beautiful pictures of her beautiful work. And I'm going to share those with you this right now. This week's subscribers quilt comes from Ann M. And Ann M asked me not to say what her full last name is. So I am honoring that request. She writes to me about this. She says she's from Georgia, and she says the photo is my studio sign. I got the idea from Pinterest. There wasn't a pattern. It is a 24 by 24 inch. The background is salvages, salvages sewn onto a muslin foundation. I then machine applique on top of the image of me. There's cotton fabric, wool fa felt, buttons, and pins with machine quilting and hand embroidery. The sewing machine is a Japanese 50s clone of the Singer 15. It is branded Bel Air like the car. I actually sew with it. It is one of my 18 beautiful vintage sewing machines. So Anne, let's just take a closer look at a couple of things here. Let's first of all look at your very interesting quilt. This is quite fun. And I absolutely love the way you use the salvages on the, in the background. I think that's really a cool idea. I must give that a try, maybe on the back of one of my embroidery projects. Although I think I got rid of all my salvages that I was saving. 
But anyways, I'll start saving them again. But I really love the, the comical nature of this. It's just fun to look at. And it has lots of little sewing elements with the pins in the mouth and the necklace made of um, spools of thread and the earrings made from pin cushions. And there's even tape measures in the hairband at the top. I just think it's extremely creative, very colorful. It brings a lot of joy, I'm sure, to you when you go into your sewing room. And let's just go down and take a look at this vintage sewing machine. My goodness, that is something else. Um, it is great. It's in excellent condition by the looks of things. And you say you sew on it all the time. So what a great piece of uh, vintage or uh, retro um what am i going to say retro machinery that you have i think this is really really cool so thank you ann m for sending this to me and i hope to see some more of your creations in the future and i'm starting to get a little low on submissions for me to feature here on the channel so if you've got something you'd like to share with us please send me a couple of pictures a very brief blurb very brief blurb about it and just send it to my email and the emails in the uh, show notes below. Okay, so that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. And this isn't really a channel. Um, this was a segment from uh, the um, So Yeah guys. And you've heard me talk about them before. And I think most of you that are quilters will know exactly who I'm talking about. But they had a really interesting segment about Cherrywood Fabrics uh, Studio. Cherrywood does a lot of hand-dyed fabrics. Um, and so they went on a little studio tour showing how they manufacture their fabrics. It's a kind of a small uh, manufacturing process. They're not in a huge factory or anything like that. Um, they have a room full of washing machines that they do their dyeing in. And I just thought it was really, really interesting. So I'm going to share that uh, segment with you here. This week's YouTube channel isn't actually a YouTube channel as much as it is a featured video. I came upon this video uh, at the So Yeah um, Guys uh, site. And uh, they had this little uh, special video showing you uh, how Cherrywood Fabrics makes their hand-dyed uh, fabrics and their bundles. I don't know if you're familiar with Cherrywood Fabrics, but they are all, as I've said, hand-dyed fabrics. They have really rich-looking colors. They're a little bit pricier than your average um, quilting cotton, but very, very good quality. Now, I've never ordered anything from them, uh, mainly because of the cost and the shipping, because I'm in Canada and they're in the States. But I did find this video extremely interesting. Um, of course, the So Ya yeah guys um, are interviewing the owner of the company and they take you through the whole process of how they put together their hand dyed fabrics. And in this uh, clip right here, you can see them using a whole lot of washing machines for this process. But they also show how they market their fabrics as well, how they organize them into bundles and sets that help take the guesswork out of which colors you may want to put together. So I found this a very interesting uh, video clip and I think you will too. So check it out. So that takes me to what's on my vision board and it is a pattern called Moonstone which actually the um, blocks that I showed you earlier, I based upon that originally I was going to do this whole uh, pattern as it is, um, but I changed my mind. I started to go off on a tangent as I often do, because oftentimes I look at patterns as inspiration to do my own thing. And so that's what I'm doing. But I may come back to this one sometime in the future and actually make this quilt because I like it. And so, as I said, it's called Moonstar moonstone and it's by now i'm not going to say her name correctly and i'm sorry about this but you probably know who she is because she comes from laundry basket quilts which is on youtube and it's ita sitar and i probably have said both her names wrong sorry about that um it's a free pattern and i talk a little bit more about it in this little segment this week's 
pattern for my vision board is one that I found uh, while I was doing a search for fat quarter friendly patterns and you know me I'm always looking for freebies as well and this one struck my fancy this is called Moonstar it a uh, moonstone sorry and it is a free digital download pattern and it is done by um and I'm going to say her name incorrectly but others of you I'm sure are know who I'm talking about Edia Sitar of laundry basket quilts now she does have a youtube channel uh, as well and she offers all kinds of free patterns this one because it's fat quarter friendly and it has stars really appeals to me and i think in the right color combination i'm not fond of the color combination they're showing here nor am i fond of this color combination um but you know me i like really bold and colorful patterns so um and there's kind of the thing i'm thinking of as well in that picture um but i think it's going to be fun to make it doesn't look too complicated and it's a good way to use up some of those very special fat quarter uh bundles that walter bought me at christmas time this year so this is on my list of things to do i'm not sure when i'm going to get to it i have a few projects ahead of it but it does look like it's very, very easy. And I think this is probably a really great pattern for a beginner as well. So that's Moonstone Quilt Pattern uh, by Laundry Basket Quilts. And the download link for this free pattern is in the show notes. And so um, just to let you know, I do not have an interview this week and I haven't had an interview for a few weeks. And so usually I fill in the gap with some personal musings from me, which you may or may not want to watch. Uh, so that's what I did this week. And it's called, Do I Get Too Personal in My Vlogs? Um, so I rattle away on that. Maybe too much information. Who knows? But uh, I am uh, about to send an email off to another person that I would like to interview. And I'll see if I get a response from them. They, they are also somebody that uh, has a YouTube channel and is very popular on YouTube. So I'm not sure if this person would be really interested in having me interview them. But you know, if I don't ask, I don't know. So I am going to send off an email later today and see what I get. I'm not going to say who this person is right now. Um... But uh, I will let you know if I, well, you'll see it if I actually do get an interview with this person. And again, if you would like to be interviewed, I like to interview, as Walter calls it, my interviews are basically real life. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not interested in people who are famous because everybody knows who they are. I want the people who aren't. I want the everyday quilter like me. I'm not famous. I'm just an everybody, everyday person too, like everybody else. So that's who I want to interview. So you could be interviewed. Okay, so that takes me to being critical about something I have made. And I'm not that critical about this one because I loved it. And it's a Celtic Knot Table Runner. Now, I did show this one not too long ago because it was a, a project I had recently finished. But I'm revisiting it today because... I like it. This week's quilt of my own that I want to critique is not a quilt, but it is a table runner, and I'm not even using it as a table runner. Now, I did show this to you some time ago, um, after I had created it, and it's called the Celtic Knot. And this is an in-the-hoop project, which means I used my embroidery machine to create this. I even used the embroidery machine to sew segments together because this is made in three pieces. Now, this particular pattern, I believe, came from OESD, which is uh, a great online store for buying embroidery files. And I don't think it was that expensive. It may have been on sale when I bought it. I don't remember. Now, the colors aren't coming out of this very clearly but it's really a dark purple with silver along the edges the silver satin stitching and it is a uh, silvery gray fabric where these bubbles are also embroidered um it was a lot of fun to put together it looks very complicated but it was very easy and all of this uh quilting that you see done on here 
is also all done in the hoop. So you can knock off some of these fairly quickly uh, if you want to make them as a gift. Now, there isn't much I can say about this in terms of critiquing it because in a sense, all I did was lay down the fabric and pick the thread color and away the machine went and did this. There are some tips and tricks that you should follow uh, if you try this for the first time because, um, well, the very first time you do it, you might not get your pieces quite lined up for the sewing part. But once you've done it once, you'll learn the technique and it's very, very easy. Now, I'm not using it as a table runner. As I said, I'm using it as a decoration on one of my cupboard doors. And my plan is to make more of these type of things and put them on all of my cupboards. I have a wall of cupboards, about four cupboard doors, that I think would be uh, nice decorations in my sewing room. So that's the Celtic Knot, and it's in the Hoop Embroidered Project. And that takes me to this week's quilting store online. And this one's called Quincy's Quilting. And uh, yeah, it's, well, just watch. This week's quilt store online of the week is called Quincy's Quilting. Again, this is one of the spots I have never been to. I've never ordered anything from them. And this is my first look at this online quilt store. So let's explore it together, shall we? So as I said, it's called Quincy's Quilting, and this is their first page on their website. And let's just go down and see what we have. Uh, they have a picture of Missouri, Missouri Star Quilt, yet they're a Canadian store. Why? Only 68 more days, it says. Let's go back to that. Only 68 more days until our Missouri Star Retreat Adventure begins. Well, that's interesting. They're offering a trip to... Um, Missouri Star Quilt count as of February the 13th is when they were counting that so I'm not sure if this is recent or this is something from the past they have an update on here from September the 1st um, and they're talking about COVID of course and it looks like they have a another adventure from Alberta they are located in Alberta to Sisters Oregon which is for their annual quilt show, which is a very popular one. I've heard much about that. Uh, and now they have fabrics, notions, long arm services, and travel. So let's hit the fabrics, shall we? I kind of like their the look of their website, at least on the first page. So they have collections and colors and designers and manufacturer pre-cuts, theme, and fabric type. So they have them all categorized for you and over on the left hand side you can see how many fabrics they have and they say they have over 4,000 fabrics and they're broken down into these areas okay let us go to Northcott there's supposed to be 1,710 and I love Northcott and so what are we showing here well we have layer cakes in Northcott the Toscana uh, collection which I really like 5595 that seems like a fair price for 42 uh, 10 inch squares they have a lot of them to check from they have the graduation uh, ones which is another popular line in Northcott I've had those many times they have them by charm pack seem to have a fair collection of uh, pre-cuts at least in charm packs and in layer cakes and then fabric. Now fabric looks like it's 2095 a meter. I'm assuming that is a meter. So let's just take a look. Yes, it's all in meters. So I'm happy about that as well. And the price is about middle ground right now, as far as fabric prices are concerned. Um, quite a bit to choose from. Now I'm not seeing anything popping up and saying that something is out of stock. So I'm wondering if you order something and it's out of stock if you'll know that right up front or if you have to wait until you get it into your cart. And I'm just glancing down there. This is some uh, plaid batiks. Um, I have not seen those before. Those are kind of interesting. Yeah, they seem, just in the North Cod alone, they seem to have a really good selection. Fat quarter bundles. 16 pieces, $107.95. Prices, of course, are all Canadian because it's a Canadian store. I don't think that's unreasonable. Um, okay, 
So that's fabrics. Let's go in and take a look at other products. They have a clearance bin. They have other fabrics. Cross stitch supplies, interfacing stabilizer. I'm reading over here on the left side. Kits, notions, patterns, puzzles. Okay, let's check out their clearance section. Say 50% or more. And that's the only thing they've got in clearance right now. And I can kind of see why. I'm not fond of that one myself. Maybe other people would be. Okay, let's go back in. Look at some more things here. Um, they have cross-stitch supplies. So if you're into cross-stitch, let's go back into their fabric section. And uh, let's just, for the sake of price, go into designers. And Three Sisters, Art Gallery Fabrics. And they list them all here on the left side as well. So they seem to carry a lot of the um, major designers. Well, let's go to Laundry Basket Quilt since I was talking about them earlier with the pattern of the week. So what's the price on these? $22.95. Okay, so it looks like depending... Uh, who the designer is or the manufacturer, the prices will vary. Not everything is $20.95. So they are moving up into, well, I don't know if this is the higher end these days. I think this is the average price for uh, fabric by the meter. So, yeah, and they seem to have a fair amount of a selection there as well. So let's go out of fabric. I think I saw kits. We, well, take another look at uh, their pre-cuts um okay under fabric maybe the pre-cuts are under the fabric check this out and see yeah so here's their pre-cut section just want to see what they're pricing their jelly rolls at 10 inch squares two and a half inch strips five inch Back quarter bundles, half meter bundles, and panels. Okay, let's go here. This is where the jelly rolls would be. Two and a half inch strips. I'm always looking to see what they have for a selection. $68.95 for 40 Yeah. In the ballpark. Uh, looks like a lot of moda. And that's about it. Well, jelly rolls are not that impressive in selection which I'm finding in most Canadian stores. There's much more of a selection in the American stores. Um, okay, let's just go back a step. And we have panels. Shall we check panels and see what we have here? Ooh, that's a spooky one in the middle. Hmm, I like that. For Halloween. Ah, that one I own. That one's pretty. That one's pretty too. Get a head start on your Christmas uh, quilting. That one, I love that one by Northcott. That whole line of fabric, I really love the steampunky look to it. I may have to order a few things from them. We'll see. Better check with Ultimate Sewing first. They may have it. Oh, well, there's the panel I bought with the uh, maple leaves on it. Yeah, so they've got some interesting panels in here, if you're into panels. Um, okay, let's go back a step again. And uh, what else do they have? These are all products. I'm back into that, uh, into the pre-cuts. So I want to take a look here at their kits. Uh, they have batting. What are they offering for batting? Interfacing stabilizer, batting. Looks like they have Bozel, Hobbs, Tuscany Collection, Blend It, Silk Batting, Bleached, Wool Batting. Okay. Um. 108 wide bleach batting. That's what I usually buy. 80, 20, 23, 95 a meter. 
Uh, yeah, that's about the going price, I'd say, when you're buying it that way. I buy mine on huge rolls, so I get it for a little less money, of course. So let's see. What else do we have in here? Kits. Do we have much to choose from in that? Um, holiday themed runners and placemats. And it looks like a mug rug, Halloween placemats, runners and placemats. Let's take a look here. Yeah, it's the same stuff. So, yeah, nothing much in kits at all to pick from. Maybe that's for future expansion. Notions. Well, if you want to buy a puzzle, they have puzzles. Patterns. Okay, well, let's check out notions first. Accessories, adhesive, cutting tools. Yeah, you know, notions are notions, right? Everybody has pretty much the same thing. And I'm not even going to bother checking the prices, but let's check their thread. They're showing Booterman. Um, and that seems to be what they sell is Booterman. Thread and floss. They have it. Yeah, Guterman is what they specialize in. Okay. And one other thing that was under Notions. Let's take a look at patterns. See what they have for a selection of patterns. If I can get into that. Okay. Applique, books, children theme, paper piecing, O Canada. Let's check out the O Canada. Uh, the Glowing Hearts one, they have that. A lot of Border Creek. Well, just in this category alone. Ooh, I kind of like that one. Um, They do have, looks like a fairly good selection of patterns and price-wise. Mm, $12.95 rings in my head is the price average price they're 15.95 well border creek might be more i'm not sure i don't know if that's out of the way i don't think it's terribly out of the way okay so that's what they've got shopping they've got a what's new section and some featured things oh that's kind of caribbean boutiques like that so yeah they have new things on here they have long arm services travel interesting Looks like they do this Missouri Star quilt kind of thing. Yeah. Friday, April 22nd to Thursday, April 28th. Seven days, six nights. Quilt retreat. 2000, $2,100, almost $2,200 Canadian. Limited space available. It's a round trip bus service. Oh, round trip bus service from Kansas City International Airport to Hamilton, Missouri. Okay, so you're flying. Six nights dormitory style accommodation with individual twin bed. 24 hour access to sewing room. Sewing machine kits provided for the duration of retreat. So they have a sewing machine, cutting mat, Rory. Okay, so you don't have to worry about lugging your sewing machine. Um, 24 hour access to coffee and tea. All meals are included. Oh, what's not included? Flights and transportation from and to Kansas City, Missouri from your home base. Hmm. Okay, so on top of that 2200 by the looks of things, you've got uh, you've got to pay for your flight. Hmm. I don't know. That's really pricey because flights are not cheap. And they have the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show as well. It's it's even more expensive while you're going to Oregon. Well, I don't know. This is going from Alberta, though. Hmm. Hmm. I'm just reading this quickly. Yeah. Expensive trips. But I guess, you know, if you don't have to do the driving, someone else is arranging it all for you, it might be worth it. You got your meals and your accommodation included. But I'm just thinking this added price of the flight might put it a little bit you know, too expensive for my taste. Okay, you have gift gift certificates, and who are 
who we are. Let's check that out for a minute. And they're a local shop. And it's a lot of blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Well, if you're interested, you can read that for yourself. So overall, I would say that this is worth checking out online. Prices don't seem too bad. Ah, one thing we didn't check, though, was shipping. Let's see if that's listed down at the bottom. Shipping, here we go. Uh, let's see. Ground shipping within Canada is provided for a flat rate fee, depending on your province. And they list it here. So basically in Alberta, it's 15 bucks. The rest of Canada is 20 bucks. That's not bad. Um, you can get, for an extra fee, you can get expedited, or expedited, sorry, shipping. Uh, shipping to the U.S. Um, they have flat rate shipping, but it looks like you have to contact them for that. So, okay, shipping's not bad with it either. So overall, I think this is a site that I might consider in the future buying some things from. And if I do, I'll let you know about that. So that's Quincy's Quilting. So this is a busy week because we're getting ourselves ready for the retreat. First in-person retreat sponsored by Ultimate Sewing, our favorite and local quilting store. Uh, it's being located in a spot that's about an hour north of us, northeast of us, sort of a thing. And uh, we're really looking forward to it. But as I said, if you saw So Chatty the past week, we talked about everything that we take. We went over our list. I make lists. I'm a list maker. And uh, it's like we take everything but the kitchen sink. And there's a reason for that. And we talked about the reasons for that in the So Chatty episode. And there is a link to that uh, if you haven't seen it already in the show notes below. But yep, we're getting everything ready. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be kind of like a little mini vacation. And we haven't had one of those in quite some time. You know, pre-COVID's when we did that before. And that seems like a hundred years ago, doesn't it? So anyways, we're getting everything ready for that. And uh, yeah, and I also bought <laughs> some some more toys. Um, I broke down and bought an AccuQuilt system. Now, I have been thinking about this. I am no stranger to die cutting because that's basically what it is. It's a die cutting system for cutting fabric. It's been around for quite a while and I'm sure you've heard of it before. They're quite expensive, but there was a sale on at another one of the quilting stores we love to go to that's north of us called Kawartha Quilting. And so I thought I'd take advantage of that right now. So I did. So I bought the Go Big AccuQuilt machine. I bought a bunch of dies and things. Um, I especially wanted it for strip cutting because it doesn't matter what kind of ruler you use. It doesn't matter how accurate you are. You can still have some problems getting like really long strips out of your fabric. You know, the kind of things you need for borders or for binding, that kind of stuff. And this gives you very accurate cuts. Also, it's great for half square triangles because that's what I wanted it for as well. And of course, if you do applique, and I do admit that I did buy, and it was an afterthought, um, they had this die on sale. It makes a gnome. <laughs> and you know me and gnomes. So yeah, so I put in a fairly big order and I'm hoping I can pick it up at their store before we leave for the retreat. Otherwise, I'm not getting it until we come back from the retreat. Um, we'll see about that. So, yep, another new purchase. And I will do a video about that purchase when I get it. And I have played around with it a little bit. It'll be a demo kind of a thing. But I'm sure many of you have heard about AccuQuilt, uh, the cutting system before. And uh, there's tons of videos on YouTube about it. So, And I've been watching them as well. So, yeah. Another thing for sewing. Okay, and advance notice. Craft and chat. You know what happens on the first Wednesday of every month? Well, the first Wednesday of the month comes next week. So in the show notes, you will find the Zoom link for it. I will be sending out uh, later this week uh, on uh, an advance notice about that with the link in it to the people that are on my mailing list for craft and chat and if you want to be on the mailing list just drop me a line let me know no problem 
I will add you. All are welcome, as you know, and it's not just for quilters. It's for everybody who's a maker. Okay, uh, whatever. Come and join us. It's, we are growing uh, a little bit each time. We have a few more people, and it's nice. We have a really great time. And it starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April the 6th and runs until approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope you can join us because it's a good time to be had by all. And anything else that I want to tell you? No, I think that's got me for this week. So thank you for joining me today. Um, be sure to tune in next week uh, because I will be sharing our experiences at the retreat. Um, just an advance notice as well. Uh, so chatty, there won't be one this week because we'll be at the retreat although we're playing with the idea of doing something a little different doing a so chatty on location i don't know depends on a lot of factors with there so um anyways for sure next week on this in this episode i will be talking more about what we experienced at retreat how things went and i'm sure there'll be lots of tales to tell you so i hope you'll be able to tune in next week for that so until then have a great week uh, I hope it's warmer wherever you are now that spring has sprung and uh, do something creative. Make yourself happy. Make something pretty. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye bye for now.